Joining me now is Strategic Analysis Australia Director Michael Shoebridge. Michael, thanks for your time tonight. Do you think the government has waited too long to act on this? Yes, Caroline, I do. The whole reason that this no-go legislation exists is because it's very hard to prove what happens in a conflict zone. So having a defined geographical area where people commit an offence if they go is a very clear basis for legal action, and it also really deters people. And just urging people to leave Lebanon is clearly not working. We've just had Australians killed in a zone that should be clearly a no-go zone for Australians because it's part of a war. Well, moving on to a, a situation very close by, of course, in the Red Sea, where tensions are escalating, Iran has reportedly now sent a warship into the Red Sea after the US Navy destroyed three Houthi boats. Michael, our national sovereignty relies on free passage on the high seas. These attacks in the Red Sea are an attack on us in Australia, I guess, in a way. But is the Albanese government standing up for us? Well, Caroline, we've heard all kinds of excuses from the government about why they're not sending a warship. Apparently, the request was at too junior a level in the US system. I think that's nonsense. It was the commander of the US Fifth Fleet, an extremely senior person. We know Defence Secretary Lloyd Austin was in touch with countries, and I'm, I'd be shocked if he didn't talk to Australia. They want an Australian naval contribution. That trade is really important to our economy. But the government doesn't want to admit they don't have a suitable ship to send. Even the Iranians are willing to put a decrepit ship there to send a supportive message to the Houthis. Yeah, it would at least just be a gesture of support and friendship, I guess, but more on national security and our relationship with the top ally, the US. Donald Trump's top defence advisers have warned against sending nuclear-powered submarines to Australia, saying they don't have enough to spare and it would leave American forces vulnerable. Michael, could this deal be at risk? And do you think this has anything to do with the fact that we didn't send a warship to the Red Sea? Well, Caroline, I think it will get harder and harder for Australia to say to America, do us favours, give us nuclear-powered submarines that you don't have enough of yourselves if we're not seen to be doing our bit. So there is a connection to our failure to provide a vessel to the Maritime Task Force in the Red Sea. But the bigger issue is America won't have enough of its own submarines for itself right at the time when Australia wants them under the AUKUS deal, so the early 2030s. There's no way around that now because they take so long to build. So unless Australia has really done its part on the AUKUS, and that's something like building the East Coast submarine base, something that's politically difficult for this government, a transactional president like Trump can say, what's in it for me? Yeah, and he's done that sort of thing in the past, hasn't he, with deals that he doesn't like. So... I guess it depends who comes into power next year in the States. Uh, let's move on to another big topic today. Labor is being criticised for blocking public access to national security records of the Howard government's invasion of Iraq in 2003, despite them being declassified. Michael, the Albanese government talked a big game on transparency pre-election, but is yet to walk the talk. Caroline, they are transparently opaque and secretive. They are doing the opposite to what they said they would do when they were in opposition. And they're trying to say this is all the Morrison government's fault for, for something they didn't do in 2020. The real fact here is the Prime Minister's department didn't check that they'd handed over the records to the archives. And everyone got shocked, apparently, when there was nothing to release and someone said, have you checked, you handed them over. This is a failure of government oversight of two key departments, well, the archives and the Prime Minister's department. And, of course, that's Mr Albanese's responsibility. Well, Michael Shoebridge, thank you so much for your time and expertise tonight.